Welcome to my channel, fellow YouTubers. You are watching Repel Games at youtube.com slash user slash Repel Games. If this is the first Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire Wi-Fi battle that you've been watching, be sure to watch the rest of the Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire Wi-Fi battles starting from battle number one. Also, if you guys have never seen my X and Y Wi-Fi battles, also be sure to check that out. And if you guys have never seen my uh, Shiny Hunt series, be sure to check that out too. I have a couple videos where I catch shiny Pokemon live, so be sure to check that out. We are gonna go right into this battle now, and um, I am fighting against Jordan. I brought a really colorful team this time. Now I know the Klefki's coming out, I don't have anything that has taunt, so I have no choice but go into Klefki and hope that I can actually scare it away. But my uh, scaring attempt has failed, obviously, and he decides to stay in t and goes for the, well, light screen and I kind of knew that so I just went for the quiver dance now I'm really fearing the thunder wave but at the same time I really don't want to switch out into quagsire just because that this cleft key will just pretty much set up another screen and then set up spikes and maybe even swagger you know I'm not too sure what this cleft key can do so my best bet is actually just keep staying in and go for another quiver dance now the thing about this cleft key is I totally forgot to equip it with uh, energy ball so I really wanted to use the energy ball in case that Azumarill was coming. Obviously I did not want to go for a fire attack because my opponent does have the Chandelier. So yeah, the you know plus two bug buzz does an all right amount, but still not quite enough. Really fearing a waterfall now, so I have to switch into my defensive wall. Now Azumarill packs quite a fucking punch. So this waterfall is still gonna sting, but you know, Cresselia is Cresselia. So yeah, I do have I do carry leftovers, and you know I still recover pretty well. Uh, really fearing that uh, knockoff, so I'm just gonna prepare myself, heal just a little bit of HP before taking a knockoff. I'm expecting the knockoff very badly, but turns out he doesn't have knockoff. So really strange. Not really sure what's going on, and he does get a critical. I still take it pretty well, but you know it still did a decent amount. So I want to prepare myself for another moonlight just in case he's gonna keep landing those play roughs. I do outspeed him, so I grab at full HP, but then I realize that there's a reason why this Azurumo doesn't have knockoff, because it has Belly Drum, and once you see Belly Drum on Azurumo, you already know his last move, it's Aqua Jet. But um, in this case, he doesn't even need to use Aqua Jet. He does pack the Citrus Berry, I have no choice but go for the Psychic, hope that, I don't know, maybe I can get a critical and kill him, but of course I don't, and he will finish me off with a plus 6. Motherfucking plus 6 waterfall, and that is going to destroy my defensive wall. But I do have something that can counter off this Azurumo. Yes, my Quagsire. My Quagsire actually is not physically defensive, especially defensive. However, my Quagsire does possess the Unaware ability. So basically what the Unaware ability is, um, you know, any stat boosts coming from my opponent is completely ignored by Quagsire. So even for especially defensive Quagsire, that takes a play off pretty damn well. So I do go for a curse, and with leftovers, I actually can live one more play buff. Not too well, but I can just live it. And I know what you're thinking, I have 7 HP, but don't worry, I have recovered. So I'm back at full now, which is great. And now I'm really fearing that this Azurable actually might switch out now, because usually by now my opponents have been discouraged, and usually by now, well, they know that a play buff can't kill me. Surprisingly, he does stay in, and luckily for me, he does miss that play buff, which is really crucial, because it allows... Quagsire to be still above half. Now I'm really fearing the Sceptile yet again. Um, you know, Sceptile can completely destroy me, so I have to watch out. But he's actually gonna go Cuffy, so I know why. He's just gonna set up another screen. You know, that's usually how Cliffies do it. Um, you know, but I knew for a fact that um, he's not gonna do anything but go for a screen, so I just had to, you know, do as much as I can. I don't want to start setting up because, you know, like that, as I mentioned, that uh, Sceptile will come out. Now, after this earthquake, I know for a fact my opponent is going to switch out to the um, Sceptile. You know, if the screen is up, the Sceptile will take an earthquake really well. So actually, I make a double switch here, and I switch back out to Volcarona. Now, I actually could have switched out to Crobat. Now I think about it, I think Crobat might have been a safer choice, just because I could go for that U-turn and get some more switch priority. But yeah, he does go back to Chandelure, and um, you know, again, I'm really fearing that Chandelure. Because it has flash fire, so I just go for a bug buzz, do as much as I can, you know, just trying to grab as much damage as I can with these little, you know, over prediction uh, double switches. It's not quite enough though, now I'm expecting a fire blast. 
It does neutral, it's as strong as attack. However, he does go for a Shadow Ball, so, you know, kudos to him, but it still doesn't do half. And, um, really hoping that he actually would stay out, because usually Drudagon is offensive, but, um, mine is not. I just go for these Stealth Rocks. You know, sometimes Drudagon has, like, Stone Edge, Earthquake, you know, something that, that can scare out Chandelier. However, my opponent does stay in, and that will finish on my, my Drudagon. So unfortunately, Drudagon did not lay a damn finger, but he did set up rocks, which is pretty important in this battle, as you'll see. And uh, I just went for a Brave Bird, so I guess I do outspeed it, regardless if he's carrying a scarf or not, and I'm pretty sure I could kill it, because it's a Chandelier. However, my opponent's Chandelier is invested in HP. That's why he takes the Brave Bird. My Crobat is Choice Banded, it's supposed to kill that Chandelier, but this, bulk, this Chandelier is slightly bulkier than your average Chandelier, so... He's gonna switch out now, but you know, my rocks are up, so that Chandelier might just die. Or it might not, but it'll be really close to dying if you just switch it out. Here comes the Diggersby switching into a Choice Banded Brave Bird. It's gonna do over half. Now I know for a fact Diggersby carry Earth uh, Quick Attack. No Diggersby, like, do not carry Earth, sorry, uh, Quick Attack. So they, I know for a fact uh, Quick Attack is coming, and um, you know, sometimes Diggersby is Choice Banded too. So this quick attack will still do a decent amount even to a steel type Genesect. Now I really don't know what he's going to do, I really thought, thought maybe he's going to switch into Sceptile or something, you know. So I just you know, went for a Saber Bat and go for a Flamethrower. Luckily, thank goodness, my opponent did not go into Chandelier. But he did bring out the Gardevoir, so I actually could have used the Flash Cannon. That will easily one-shot this Gardevoir for fucking sure. But um, yeah, like I mentioned, I was really fearing that maybe the Klefki was going to come out. That's why I didn't want to go for the uh, Flash Cannon. But now I think about it, I think Flash Cannon would have been the most safe choice. Because even a Gardevoir will take it, it will be a 3 hit KO. I do outspeed him, but you know, this Gardevoir did trace my download abilities. ability, so... This Gardevoir's uh, Shadow was going to do quite a fucking load ton. And here, I could just finish off this Gardevoir next turn. Again, I'm really fearing that Chandelier, but luckily, I did not overpredict this time. So sometimes overprediction can totally destroy you. So, you know, uh, you, you know, I'm making it seem like this, you know, battle is on my side. You know, I'm winning, but it's not. I'm. It's still a very fair fight here. We still have the very same amount of Pokemon. So I'm expecting a Shadow Ball now. Now this is especially defensive Quagsire, but he predicts that really nicely and goes for the Energy Ball. So, yeah. That was great prediction on my opponent's part, well done. I could have actually went into Volcarona, ate up that, you know, energy ball, but yeah. Well now for a fact, I know that he, he's gonna go for energy ball, and I know that he's not gonna switch out because I have rocks. That actually gives me an opportunity to go for the Quiver Dance. Now after seeing my Quiver Dance, I'm pretty sure my opponent's like, okay, shit, I have to switch out Chandelier now, even if Chandelier's gonna die after sending it out because I can't let, you know, this Volcarona, um, you know, sweep. And I knew that, so, actually, I just decided to go for a Bug Buzz again, um, you know, I didn't want to go for a Fire Tide, it was just a little bit too risky if I did go for a Fiery Dance to that Chandelier, but now I think about it, I really should just went for a Fire Dance, it would probably destroy this fucking Klefki, so. He's gonna stay in and keep using screens, I'm like, okay, fuck this shit, I'm gonna have to keep using Quiver Dances so that I can outspeed, um, the, the biggest threat that he can really do to me, which is a Diggersby. Diggersby probably has, you know, well, you know, anything. And, you know, anything Diggersby can do can probably one-shot me except for Quick Attack. So he's actually going to go into Chandelier, let it fodder off, and see what I'm going to do. Predicting that I actually go for an attack, you know, that'll waste a turn, that's fine, but no, I am not going to go for an attack. I'm going to keep using Quiver Dances. I'm at plus three Quiver Dances now. I am paralyzed, but hey, I got, you know, pretty much all my speed back up, so I actually might be able to outspeed this Diggersby, unless it's Scarfed. But, um, he's not Scarfed, and he's worried about that I will outspeed him, so he's gonna go for a quick attack, but it's not gonna be enough to kill, and I am just gonna finish off this Diggersby with this Fire Dance. Luckily, I did not get paralyzed. I do get a special attack boost, too, so. It's well played on my part, you know. However, that life orb damage will finish me off, but I guess it's not a too bad of a trade-off. But I'm sitting at a pretty dangerous spot here. Um, I only have Genesec and Crobat left, and they only and both of my Pokemon have like a speck of HP left, and you know my opponent did go for these spikes left. 
So I have two Pokemon left, well, one now after this Gen Sec, and my opponent has two Pokemon left as well, the Klefki and the uh, Sceptile. So I have no choice, going to Crobat, sitting at really low HP again, he's going to go for a Priority Thunder Wave. I have no choice but go to Brave Bird, Brave Bird will definitely kill, I'm just praying like, oh please, do not uh, kill me in recoil. If I don't kill myself in recoil, that'd be great. Then I can, you know, fight the Sceptile next turn. But then now I think about it, it doesn't quite matter because even if I have lived and, you know, be able to fight that Sceptile, I would die next turn to rig call damage and that's actually a suicide uh, attempt and that will actually make me lose as well. But yeah, that was a very close match nonetheless, very close 1-0. Uh, lovely team on both parties, but got to give a huge thumbs up to Jordan. That was an amazing team. Lovely Diggersby <laughs> and uh, amazing Sceptile as well and very annoying Klefki. So if you guys like this battle, hey, be sure to leave that like. Also, make sure to comment and subscribe. As always, thank you so much for choosing to watch Repel Games.